minister here to, to the pastor as he brings the word of God, the word of truth. Your, you say your word is truth. That you are the way, the truth, and the life. And I just pray that you all you take all three of those parts through your Holy Spirit that we've talked about here in the song. And allow Pastor to be filled with your Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts and our ears and our minds with your Holy Spirit as he preaches and teaches today. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ray. I got some feedback going up here, but uh, we'll find our way through it. Well, good morning and welcome to worship at Hollyton United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Dave. Later this morning, you'll find today's message on our website as well as on the Hollyton Charge YouTube channel and Facebook page. You'll also find the text of this message on our website. Um, and many of you, will, if not all of you, will also receive it by email at some point as well. All of the music that is being recorded today is uh, uh, in the public domain. Again, um, so many of you have been working hard over these last months to make ongoing ministry possible. And you have been an inspiration in your steadfastness and determination to make sure that um, the processes that we have in place make for the safest possible environment that we can have. We strongly encourage you to adhere to the guidelines that, that uh, you have seen as, we, as you came in. Um, they allow us to keep having our services without fear of closing down. Um, I want to give a special thanks for uh, the ones that are responsible for the deep cleaning of our facility um, and, and who will be responsible for ongoing cleanings um, when we move into the sanctuary. That is a thankless job and it's, it's required. We have to do it. Make sure that, uh, that you thank them for that work. Um, the Hollyton Inside Committee has put together their final proposal for in-person worship in the sanctuary. That proposal will be presented to the church council on September 3rd. And worship, in the meantime, will take place next week with the same schedule as today. But be watching your email, Facebook, and YouTube uh, for up, upcoming updates this week. Let us take a moment and pray as we prepare for our time together. Lord God, thank you again for bringing us together in this place and in this way. We thank you for your love and faithfulness toward us. We're grateful for the many ways that you are continually caring for us. We know that we are very blessed. We praise you for hearing and answering our prayers for all of the church family today. We know that there are people in our hearts. And we want to take a moment now and, and lift them up to you corporately. Just want to give you an opportunity, folks, right where you are, to say out your, your, the, the, the concern that you have. I'm not going to hear it. God is. We're just going to give you time to do that. Though there are many on our list that need your touch, that need your care, that need healing and provision. Thank you. Lord, we thank you also for your great wisdom and understanding concerning our own circumstances. All of the requests we carry in our hearts, we give to you. We know that out of your abundant resources, you can heal and provide for every need. Would you bring that healing? Would you offer that encouragement? Supply those needs today? Lord, we trust you today. We trust in your love and care. We humbly offer ourselves to you in submission and worship. 
We know that you are working out your plan. Continue to minister your protection and grace to each one of us today. Now in faith, we lift up our voices together, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first hymn today is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. God continues to greatly bless us every day. God calls us to also be a blessing to others by our faithfulness, our generosity, patience, and love. 
Our church's financial obligations continue regardless of what happens in the world around us. In order that we may meet faith, be faithful to meet those obligations, I invite you all to continue your faithfulness in giving as God directs you. You can continue to mail in your offerings or um, leave them each time that you enter here for worship. Let's look to God in prayer. Oh God, all good gifts that come to us come first from you. We are grateful for your provision this and every day. By your generosity toward us, we're encouraged in our generosity. And may the gifts that we offer be blessed, even multiplied, that they may serve your purposes and your purposes alone. Now as we prepare uh, to hear this morning's message, give light, O oh Lord, to our hearts. Open our ears that we may hear your voice. Open our eyes that we may see what you have for us today. And may we all know the incomparable miracle of your presence in this hour. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. One of my favorite verses from Scripture is Romans 8.28. How many of you know Romans 8.28? Just show me your hands. There's a few of you. Romans 8.28. It essentially goes like this. God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That is a verse that gives me confidence that whatever is happening around me, God is going to turn it for my good. There's a great deal of comfort in that, especially when I'm feeling weak and uh, less than adequate for the work that God has called me to do. Jenny and I were just talking this morning. I'm just going to let you in on a little secret. We were talking about how pastors preach Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, a message that is fresh and vital and and relevant and the truth is after 25 years of preaching for the most part twice every Sunday this is not an easy trick <laughs> in fact it's, there's no trick to it it's hard it's hard work and there are those Sundays where honestly I preach a message and I'm thinking oh my gosh that was horrible but I have a God who is greater than the best or the worst sermon that I ever preach. And I've discovered that what is most important is that you hear God's word from Scripture. When you hear that, the word promises us that God will accomplish the purposes of, the, of his word for which it was sent forth. So, honestly, so there are times when I get up here before you that I feel a little weak and a little inadequate for the job. That's just the plain truth. This verse gives me some hope for what lies ahead of me. But I'm finding out that there is so much more to it than what we read in this verse alone. The verses surrounding verse 28 add great depth of meaning, especially when we consider recent messages, last week's in particular from Romans 8, 12 to 25, where we learned that even in our greatest suffering, our sufferings cannot compare with the wondrous glory that is ours in Christ. The text today builds over five verses from the reality of our weakness to the climax of being glorified in Christ. Listen to Romans 8, Verses 26 to 30. Hear the word of the Lord and may God add blessing to the hearing. Paul writes, The Spirit comes to help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. The one who searches hearts knows this, 
how the Spirit thinks, because he pleads for the saints consistent with God's will. We know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. We know this because God knew them in advance and he decided in advance that they would be conformed to the image of his son. That way, his son would be the first of many brothers and sisters. Those who God decided in advance it, it would be conformed to his son, he also called. Those whom he called, he also made righteous. Those whom he made righteous, he also glorified. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, reflecting on the previous passage from last week's message, the New Interpreter's Bible Commentary says, Those who cannot see that for which they eagerly hope, need assistance to peer into the darkness ahead and to pray God's future into the present. It is that assistance that the Spirit provides coming alongside to help. Now that's pretty deep. I'm going to read that again because I think this is an important setup for the rest of the message. Those who cannot see that for which they eagerly hope, need assistance to peer into the darkness ahead and pray God's future into the present. It is that assistance that the Spirit provides coming alongside to help. As we walk through the text verse by verse, we're going to make some amazing discoveries. And again, I said, you know, 28 is my favorite verse, but 28 taken alone really doesn't offer us the fullness of all that it means. Verse 26 talks about our weakness. How, how many of you feel are feeling your weaknesses today? Okay, a few of you. Our bodies are a part of all of creation and are subject to to decay and death, and therefore weak. Every one of us, our bodies are weak. And that's why we really don't know what to pray for regarding the redemption of the world. The mission of our denomination is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of not other people alone, but transformation of the world. And so there is something greater at stake. We began to make that connection last week with the text. Paul is connecting our salvation together with the redemption of planet Earth. <laughs> when it comes to all of that, indeed, we need the Spirit's help. Good news. The Spirit's help we get. The Spirit pleads our case. Our intercessions come in the form of unexpressed groans, the Word says. Have you ever been so burdened by an issue in prayer that all you could do was moan and groan over it? You didn't have words to express. Ever been there? I think many of us have. We need help in those moments. Paul here is speaking of an agonizing in prayer, a mixture of, of lament and longing, something that is a, a deeper wrestling with the pain of the world and of the church. It's a, it's a struggle in which, like Jacob, Christians might discover that they had, after all, been wrestling with God as well as their own weak humanness. And here's the good news. Like Jacob, and we heard about him a few weeks ago, we prevail. When we reach the point of prayer in which our words give out, the Spirit comes and intercedes on our behalf. 
Verse 27 lets us know that God knows how the Spirit thinks. Okay, let's, let's think about that a minute. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We call them, the, the, Wesley called it the three-one God. We call it the Trinity, the Holy Trinity. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Well, of course then, as, as the three persons of the Trinity live intimately in relationship, God knows how God thinks. And the good news is God is in us. God searches our hearts and through the Holy Spirit hears our intended intercessions. And even though all we can do is groan, God hears and answers. In fact, when we reach that point in prayer when all we can do is groan, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity shows up most powerfully and most fully. That brings us to verse 28. If the Holy Spirit is operating in us and if we truly love God, God works things together for our good. In other words, those things that we have been interceding over that have brought us to the point of moans and groans as we found in verse 26 even though we couldn't find words these things will be taken care of by God God's answer will be just what we were longing for in our groaning think about that a moment when the words disappear and all we can do is groan. The Spirit comes in, pleads on our behalf the will of God. And God knows how the Spirit thinks. And God is going to respond to God's will. Powerful, powerful moment. And the things that we have been groaning over, God will answer according to his will. In fact, along with that, all of our experiences, God will work together for our good. God has a purpose for us, and God will fulfill that purpose. And just, just what is that purpose, you may ask? Well, remember, God calls us to faith concerning these things that, that come into our lives that, that we might feel are unbearable. We prayed at Conklin Forks this morning for um, some folks who are grieving their losses. And I know he, we here have suffered loss in this church during this pandemic. And we haven't been able to grieve together in a way that is traditional, the way that we are used to. And that creates a double grief. Listen to this. Not only do we grieve the loss but we grieve our inability to grieve the way we normally grieve. It compounds the problem. As one experience that can become insurmountable, we can get lost in that. But that's when God comes in. And in faith, God reveals to us hope that he may shed his glory, shine his glory upon us. Verse 29 lets us know that God's plan from the start was to create a Christ-shaped family, a renewed human race modeled on the sun. Once you and I began our journey through redemption. We also began our transformation into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. This journey as Christians is our journey to true humanity. The humanity that God designed from the beginning of creation. As we consider the first chapters of Genesis, we, we, can, we find 
uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And there with them, God walked with them in the cool of the day. They had intimate relationship with one another. All was well. Adam and Eve tended the garden. They enjoyed the fruit of their labors and, and they enjoyed the fellowship of God Almighty. Then we get to chapter 3. And chapter 3 changed everything. God in transforming us into the image and likeness of his son who was obedient even to death. His purpose is to bring us into that true humanity where we too reflect the image of Christ the Son, even as Christ reflects the image of God the Father. So God reached out to us in grace hoping for our response of obedience to the call. Our response then results in moving into God's purpose, which is our own Christ-likeness. You and I were set apart for a particular purpose, a purpose in which our cooperation, our loving response to love, our obedient response to the personal call of God is all important. This means conformity to Jesus the Son, conformity to his life and to his death. That means that like Jesus, we suffer. Like Jesus, we groan. Like Jesus, we triumph. And finally, verse 30 brings us to the climax of this, this, whole, uh, this whole argument, this whole discussion. And we find here Paul speaking again, not in terms of the future, but of the present. What's incredible about this is that when we think about what I'm going to share with you, we often think about that as something that will happen in the future, something that will happen the day that we die and we come into the presence of Jesus. Folks, it isn't so. Listen to this. Paul's words tell us that we are, we are conformed. We are called. We are made righteous. We are glorified. These are already done in Christ. And therefore they are already done in us. We need not wait for it. Imagine what we don't see right now is real in our lives God sees as a done deal we live far too far below our privilege as Christians the question is when will we really own what God already has done here it is we're Christians, right? We call ourselves Christians. The word means little Christs. And so, already, we are conformed into the image and likeness of his son. It's time for us to live into that. Then the spirit works in the heart to produce faith, hope, and love. And this is our being called, our, our conversion. God has made us a part of the family, the sin-forgiven, worldwide people of God. We are then made righteous. And this means that through Christ we are made right with God. It's not something that we do, but it's something that is done to us. And as Christ is glorified, so also we are glorified. We don't have to wait. It's now. This being glorified is not a spiritual eventuality. It is a physical reality now. We begin now and into the future as the work of the redeemed in God's new world, we bring about the liberation of creation. 
all of creation. From injustice, from misery, from bondage, from corruption and death. So, we have indeed a glorious future in Christ, serving with him in the world that is yet to come. But, we live in the present. We live here and now. The same glory we look forward to in the future is here, is, it's ours here and now. When we truly begin to see God's purpose for us now, our transformation now into the image and likeness of Jesus for the transformation of the world now, then how we live from day to day, even in the midst of a pandemic, will also be transformed. God's purpose will be revealed to the world in and through us. So, yes, the future is ours, but we are alive now. So much more is the present ours. Let us live today as if eternity has already come. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your, your incredibly encouraging word to us today. Lord, you have given us, well, a lot to think about. But you have told us that it's done. We know now that when we are at our weakest and words disappear from our lips, the Holy Spirit within us reaches out to you on our behalf. We know that you have an incredible future for us. In fact, even our present holds more for us than we can fully understand. But this is the truth. Today we are conformed to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Today we are called into a living hope and set apart for your amazing purposes. You have set our lives are right, making us righteous before you. And as you have glorified your Son, so you have glorified us. Today we obediently surrender to you that we may know that true and living hope and live into the new creation you have made of each one of us. You are all we need in this life. May our lives continue to demonstrate that you are Lord by our obedience and faith. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart.
now to the one who is able to protect you from falling and to present you blameless and rejoicing before his glorious presence to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord belong glory majesty power and authority before all time now and forever amen amen Because he lives